Hi everyone, and welcome back to Scrap Addict Creations. I'm Diane, and today we're going to be continuing on with the It's the Little Things mini book. It's a six by six book, and I'm really excited to share the next few pages with you. So let's get scrapping. Okay, we're going to start today with page 12 and 13. This is the kit layout, and they'd used um, two different type of cards here. This one has a picture on it with some words, and then this one's like kind of more of an invitation. Again, I don't have this type of, of picture, so I had to change mine up, and I did change it up quite a bit. So the first one I did, let's see here, was this one. And I have this word paper. I re oops, really like it. And I used a little bit of the nectarine paper here. This grid paper right here. Okay. And then over here, the same thing except just the, the word paper at the bottom. I also took the stamp, which is this one from the kit, and I put it along here. And then I put a little strip of black. Didn't really care for that, but didn't hate it. Let's put it that way. This one, I put the black, like the, the layout. Um, this one got a little covered. So I had to just kind of work with it. Um, but it's the same concept as the other one. I just changed the black on that. I did use nectarine behind everything. So I think I'm going to go with the black because I like that a little better. And see if I can recreate this pretty good. Um, to share with you because I really do like it. So we'll go over the sizes. These are for the stickers. I did color um, the stickers here. This one and this one. Okay. So these are th three by three. And this one right here is, I think it's it's three and a fourth by five. I think this was the size of the, in the kit. Maybe it wasn't, maybe it was a scrap. It could have been a scrap. And then I cut these to three inches. And right now they are three by six. Once I put them on the paper, we will trim the edges and they will be three by five and three quarters. A couple of little prep works. Let's move things up. We have, So I have one where you can read it this way and one that is upside down. And the reason I did that is so that we can, let me find my glue, we can put these little pieces on and kind of go right across in the same spot. And then I know they're even. And the other little one. There we go. Okay, so we have those two done. And I have adhesive on the back, yay. And then over here, we're going to just kind of go across, whoops, this one, wildly and uneven. And we're just gonna put this little guy down here. This one isn't as dire that it matches the others because of the fact that it's on a separate page but I liked these matching perfectly. So this one's got a little bit of room on it. Okay, now we're gonna set those bits aside and we're gonna grab out our white daisy and our nectarine and our little brush. And remember, because of the fact that you're not gonna see most of it, I can hide a lot of the uh, these marks. <laughs> Oops, there's a big one, but that one will totally be hidden. Also today when I was playing with this, let me get some over here on this side, I noticed that if I started it, let me see if I can do it on this one. It was on the, the next one. If I started it on the edge, oh, see, it doesn't do it on this one. Um, it worked better. So let's just kind of get this all good and done. Okay, 
The other is because they're all the even sides, I can kind of flip things around to fit what I need them to be. But this is a hot mess, isn't it? So let's put that nectarine aside. I'm gonna bring in the intense black because we'll need that in a smidge. And we're gonna bring back this piece. And let's see here. I think I like that. Pretty cool that you can just kind of change that around. And it's an easy, quick trim. Okay, let's grab the other one. And let's see here. Kind of like it that way. And there we go on this side. Pretty easy. And then we just have to add a little tiny bit of stamping. And grab the foamy piece. I know it would be easy just to turn this mat over, but there's stuff on it, so we're not gonna mess with that. I have to be very careful. Uh-oh, that dried up. Let me grab a wipe. I did not think to go and wet down my chamois right before. I'm just gonna put, oh, see that didn't do too well, but the bottom's fine. And that's pretty much what we're gonna be seeing. So, hmm, not loving it, but it'll be fine, right? That one's much cleaner. You would think I hadn't seasoned this. But I did. Okay, so we've got that done. Now, let's see here. Which side do I want to have? Which side shows more? This side shows less, so I'm gonna use this piece over here on this side. And this piece just goes right in here at the bottom. Right about there. And um, these pieces are all a fourth of an inch wide. Pretty cool base though, isn't it? Okay, I think, nope, I need to put the little black pieces on. I totally spaced that. I'm just gonna use glue for that real quick. And just kind of put this here. And then let's lift this up a little bit. Doesn't have to be a lot. And we'll slide this in. There we go. Push those down and trim them. And then we can add this to the black pieces real quick. Get that kind of all down. Just kind of move that a smidge over more. Let's put this one down. Isn't that a great base? happy with it. I definitely like it better with the black. The nectarine was, it's kind of cool. I, I like the feel of it, but it just, it's not fitting what I wanted on these layouts. So I should have stuck with the black from the get-go and I didn't even think about it. So now we'll just put some black over here real quick before we start putting papers down. Always helps if it's before, not after. Okay, put those down. Stay down, and then let's put this on here real quick. It's a very quick process. Okay, so now I have the pictures and I need to kind of look at those. Let's see here. Like this, let's go with, what do we have here? These are kind of at the same thing. So let's put 
these two over here and this one over here. Okay. So I'm going to start by putting these two down just because they're just kind of floating. And then we'll work on this one. And I know you're thinking, why isn't that pattern paper on there yet? I will show you in just a second why. And I'm just keeping those together. I probably should have just had like a one piece of black here like I did on that other page a few pages ago. Um, but since I had these cut, I just ran with it. So this is the base with the pictures. Set that aside. And let's pull these out. So I'm going to take the adhesive, because I'm crazy, wild and crazy, off of the back of these pieces. Okay, then I'm going to put this one, let's see here, right about here. And I'm going to put this one right about here. And then I'm going to take this one. So this one has it at the top of it and you can see the words. And I'm just going to slide it in right here. A little bit of adhesive hanging over. And that's about right for that one. Don't want to push down too much. So here's the one at the bottom. And we're just going to do the same thing. Just kind of slide it in. And then it's going to overlap. I know I'm, this one got down a little more than I wanted it to. And where it overlaps over here is going to be covered by that little flower. So it's not that big of a deal. There we go. Mainly we want this to look nice and this piece to look nice. The rest we can deal with in a minute. Let's just secure these down now. There we go. Okay. I don't think I used, yeah, I didn't use these little hearts. I thought I had, but I did not. Okay, so let's pull in the sticker sheets. And I've got as many sticker sheets as I can. That's for the next layout. And this one is for this one, as well as, let's see, we've got this little butterfly. And we've got these daisies. So not the big one, but the little ones. So one, two, three. One, two, three of those. Uh, the daisies, the butterfly, this heart, and lovely. And we've got this daisy and then this circle, which is over here. And one little, this one right here. Okay. So what I did on these is I kind of just colored them with this yellow um, Le Pen. I am not sure if Close to My Heart has this one. I actually got this through Notions because they had a set of them. And I was like, oh, I really like how they feel when I'm kind of doing stuff. And I'm just kind of scribbling, just a little scribble here on these leaves, or these petals. And let's, I don't want them perfect. I want them as imperfect as possible. Well, as imperfect as looks perfect, right? And then we've got the olive green, and I'm just gonna kinda draw some lines in here, just to kinda give it a little bit of green. Okay, so this side over here, we have the smaller daisy with pop tape that I, of course, tossed over to this other side. So I'll put that there and here. And we're just going to kind of stick that just a little bit further out. That's a little out too much. There we go. Okay, and then we've got one of these flowers and this little guy. I'm going to slide him in so you can still kind of see the heart and then slide that over. So very, very simple. It's got some 
green that you can see. It's got this yellow, which is really nice. I'm really liking that yellow. The other side is a, has a little more stuff. And let's grab some glue. Okay. And this. So we're just going to kind of put this right here. So only the top part is popped up. We've got the lovely. And I'm going to set that right here. Uh, for the background on the lovely, I grabbed, let's see if I can find it. Here's a full sheet. Um, this piece right here, I thought that looked really nice. For the next one, I used um, I used this one that we'll use in the, the kit. Just kind of forewarning, because I might forget. I'll try to remember when we're playing with it. So we have pop tape on the butterfly. And let's grab this larger daisy. And I want one little larger glue dot or pop tape. Okay. So I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to slide this one in here. And this one over here. Oops. Again, this would be a perfect place to be using tweezers if you were inclined and able to. And then there's that, that little grouping. Oh, let's we'll see. Isn't that cute? I really like this one. I know it is very different than the original layout, but I feel like it kind of gives the same vibe. I, I didn't use as much of this partially because I think I would have probably butchered that. But I did use this little leaf right here and I just changed up the flower because I didn't feel the pink flower really fit with that. So I'm gonna set these aside and let's pull out layout number two for the day. So the second layout is just going to kind of be a little share of what I did. I did have a little tiny bit of some technical difficulties. So I tried to follow this pretty closely. We've got this strip up at the top. We've got some of this uh, diamondy type paper. We've got this flower. Um, I used this flower on that first one, but I did use the happy memories. So this is what I came up with. And one of the reasons I liked this with this paper the pictures and the paper together is because these kind of remind this toy from Toy Story reminds me of the 50s and this paper with the black um, and the pink uh, was a ballerina reminds me of um, like a poodle skirt <laughs> so that's kind of why this all went down so what I did on this one just as a kind of overview is I added a little bit of flamingo ink which I set over here, oh no, raspberry ink. Sorry, raspberry. Down here, just a little bit, really lightly, I used on one of them, maybe two of them. I used pale pink shades and light green blend. Um, and then what I decided to do was change out the flower and I used flamingo shimmer brush. And I liked that a lot better. Here I didn't put shimmer brush over it. Here I did. And you can see that there, I mean, this is shimmery, which is great, but it's a lot darker. And I didn't care for that as much. And then here I just used the shimmer brush. So you're really seeing, you know, kind of a bunch of, you know, versions. Here, let me put these here. And you can see where I colored it with the pale pink shades medium, light, and dark, all of them, and then went over it with the shimmer brush. This one is just colored with the, the pen, and this one is just colored with the shimmer brush. Okay, so these daisies over here are all just colored with the shimmer brush, because I really like the feel of that. Okay, um, these little black strips right here, so if we go, let's go a little backwards which one I think this is the shimmer brush one we'll go with James's okay so we have a fourth inch strip of the dots here by five and a half 
a fourth inch by five and a half here. So I put the pictures down first and then I put this, this strip up at the top. And then I put the pink or you know ballerina pattern down that has the little bit of raspberry ink on it. And then I put the polka dot or kind of a diamond paper and then a black strip after I put this polka dot paper here. And then I matted these, of course, because you have to trim and stuff, especially since I was using scraps. And then I matted them on the black cardstock and then I embellished. And as you can see, I have received my order today. So I now have all three of my little kits there. But this one I think turned out really good. This daisy right here is a paper one. It's not a sticker. It is from the paper pack. And, oh, I found it. It is this paper. So on the back of the word paper is this beautiful floral paper. And it colors really nice. I can show you. So here is with the tri-blend where you could you know, just kind of get it wet. I don't know if that's really what you're supposed to do. That's just how I found it really works is if I get things wet with the lightest and then I go in with the dark and then I go in with the medium and just kind of add to it and just keep kind of circular and brushing it up. I think everybody has their kind of their own way of, of doing this. And then let's finish this area off with the light. And I kind of more, I want to say burnishing it, you know, just kind of blending it more with that light. Just keep going around. You just don't want to have those division lines. And sometimes I will only do one petal at a time if I know I haven't gotten it wet enough. But if you go back in and you add more ink, you can kind of pull out those lines. But even that is so pretty. So now I'm going to kind of put the light up in here. And actually we could even go like up all the way. And these I will just hand cut and use on this, on one of the layouts. I know one of the last layouts has this um, in black and white. So now we'll take the dark and we'll just kind of add a little line right up here. Right there. And then we'll take the medium and add one more little line so it's kind of blending that dark in and giving it just a little more definition up there. Okay, then we'll go back with the light and we'll rub it on in. And you can always go back over if you feel like there's too much of a line. I did kind of go out of the line a little bit, but isn't that a pretty flower? Isn't that beautiful? I love how much detail it gives it. Now, for the shimmer brush one, a lot of times, oh, I'll just do this one down here. What I'll do is I'll put that in there and then I'll just kind of flick it. Kind of flick it back. This one is, I had to add more juice to it. Um, it was a little dry, um, so it's a lot wetter than what I would normally want. And I'm kind of getting a little sloppy here, so sorry. But here, so there I've got it on there. And um, then what you can do is just kind of come in and flick and give it some definition. And I think it, it turns out really pretty as well. So there's 
that one, but it is a lot wetter and it is bowing the paper right now. But that's just because I had to add more ink to that brush. Um, so I do recommend if you're going to be painting or coloring with the shimmer brushes, have them a little drier. You know, take a tissue, take a napkin, uh, take a piece of paper and kind of get most of that off and you'll get more of this really pretty look to it rather than it bowing, let's see, grab it back over here, then it bowing the paper like this one's doing. But once it dries, we can kind of mold it a little bit with some pop tape and it'll still be really pretty. I just have to make sure that I cut really close because of the fact that I was being sloppy. But this one is absolutely gorgeous. I love that one. The Pale Pink Shades does a fantastic job of coloring those. So um, you have this piece is about two and a half inches by five and a half. And then this piece is about an inch and then just overlapping it with a fourth of an inch of the black. These are a fourth of an inch by five and a half. Pictures are, well, they're two and three quarters by uh, three and three quarters. Um, the mat, the black mats on that. And then I did use this paper right here underneath the this day right there. So same kind of concept and I think it turned out amazing. So thank you so much for coming to play today. I hope you enjoyed these and they're inspiring you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and play today. Please like and subscribe if you would like to see more of my videos. Leave a comment and have an amazing rest of your day. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.